So let's start with the summary of both the stories. So the first story was about the rag picker Sahib and the name of the story was Sometimes I find a rupee in the garbage. So this story was about a young little boy called Sahib whose full name was Sahib e Alam and the and he was a rag picker in the neighborhood of the author's house right and he was there he was very happy not not very happy but he was content with what he was doing and he belonged to a family who had actually moved from Dhaka which is in Bangladesh to uh, Delhi and they were staying in Seema Puri which is just inhabited by many of such rag pickers it is probably a, it is actually a slum area so here uh, you know it is being shown that how this little boy kind you know is um, going and finding uh, useful material for themselves from the garbage he's every time he's searching for something that may that he could put to use and those little things he's saying that that is gold for him why because for him obviously he is not able to afford the real gold and because that is luxury so for them the basic necessities of life itself is a uh, luxury is, is itself is a, uh, not something that they can uh, get on a very uh, on a daily regular basis therefore the little things that he finds he searches for in the garbage is what he calls as the gold so sahib the rat picker Every morning the author meets Sahib and his friends scrounging for gold that is searching for gold searching for those materials that they can use in their life that they do not have probably some used cloth some used shoes some damaged any and say some damaged thing or probably the leftover food anything that these children can use for you can can put to use or they need in their life so that is the gold in the garbage dumps of the her neighborhood sahib and his family hail from bangladesh but they have left their home long time ago storms washed away their fields and homes reducing them to a state of abject poverty that is an unending poverty the vicious cycle of poverty right which they left behind in the hope of finding a better life that is why they came to the city looking for gold so why did they migrate or why did they move from their place uh, that, from their original home which was in dhaka that is in bangladesh why did they move to delhi because there they had fields which were continuously being washed over by the storm and the heavy rainfall and the floods eventually it all got destroyed and they had to migrate from that city in search of gold in search of a better life in search of meeting the basic necessities of life right and therefore they moved to the city of delhi and they were staying in the uh, in a place called seema puri which is at the periphery of delhi now the author asks sahib you know whenever she sees that okay this little boy every day he uh, she looks and she is seeing that he is searching for things in the garbage so one day the author went to went up to uh, him and questioned him that what do you look for it now like, why do you look for uh, uh, you know why do you uh, look search the garbage so that's what he said that because that's very natural for me to do what else should i do so the author said that you should go to a school you should get educated so to this the child said that there is no school in my uh, locality and one day i would if there is a school which is being built in my locality i would surely go and uh, go to one so the author asks sahib why he does rag picking and does not go to school to this he replies that there is no school in his neighborhood in his locality the author jokingly promises to open a school after a few days and sahib asks if the author has opened the school then he would go so one day what happens when you know this conversation had taken place so after a few days sahib saw the author and he actually went up to her and he was very hopeful so he very you know with a very hopeful eyes he questioned her that have you built that house uh, sorry have you built that school so the author is embarrassed because in that conversation where she was saying that okay if i build a house if i build a school will you go to that so there 
the author just meant to see if he wanted to go she did not really mean that okay she will be constructing a school so here when the child who is hopeful who actually thought that the author is really going to construct a school for him so here the author gets very embarrassed and instead she replies back to the child saying that you know it takes a lot of time to build a school so the author is very embarrassed at having made a promise that was not meant to be fulfilled nevertheless she realizes that such promises are made to these children almost every day because she feels that maybe it's not like i am the only one who's made such a false promise to these children maybe they are used to this thing many politicians bureaucrats or many kind of people maybe come to them promise them something and then they forget so these children are used to getting such false hopes such false promises now what happens sahib e alam lord of the universe so one day you know after too many interactions and after meeting each other for a couple of times the author finally you know one day asked the child that what was his full name so the child said that my name is sahib e alam so the moment he said that you know my name is sahib e alam the author realized that maybe the child does not know the literal that is the true meaning of his uh, uh, name because sahib e alam in real would mean the lord of the universe and here the if i told the if i tell the child that you know your name means the lord of the universe probably he would not believe uh, what i'm saying why because the condition he was a rag picker he was not having that king size life he lacked the basic necessities of life right so imagine telling him that you know your name means uh, the lord of universe but look at but the contrary uh, contrary to how he was li- living contrary to his conditions of life so therefore she was amazed at this so after some months of knowing him the author asks sahib his full name the author notices the irony in sahib's name because it was sahib e alam which means lord of the universe she feels that Shah sahib would not believe what his name means unaware of the meaning of his name Sahib roams with his gang barefoot on the streets because his lifestyle the conditions of his life was very different was actually the opposite of the literal meaning of his name that is Sahib e Alam which means lord of the universe so uh, the author curiously asks you know one day when she notices that sahib and his friends group of boys in every time they are barefoot which means they're not wearing any footwear so one day she questions sahib that why don't you wear shoes why are you barefoot all the time so sahib says that you know just because i have shoes which are kept in the shelf and my mother has hasn't taken them out and given it to me but then the next child hearing to sahib's reply just says that you know even if she does he is not going to wear them so again there is a third child who says that you know i i am wishing i am hoping that when will that day come when i would have one pair of shoes for myself and then there was one in that gang who was wearing shoes but they were mismatched which means two different uh, pair two different styles of shoes he was wearing probably one from one pair and the other one was from other pair so mismatched shoes he was wearing so this had been the condition of the people of you know sahib and his gang they were living in such conditions where basic necessities of life were not there were difficult to find so the author curiously asks why they don't wear slipper now one shares that his mother does not bring them down from the shelf but hearing them another one says that he wants shoes moving across the country now while this conversation was going on the author just remembered one more incident that was way back when she moved to a place in udipi where she remembered that there was a priest uh, of a temple whose son used to you know daily every day while going to school he used to stop at the temple pray to god for the shoes that please give me a pair of shoes and after some days when the author went there she found that you know that child has grown up and now he was having a pair of shoes so 
suddenly the author in her in her mind started you know contrasting the situation that one there is a situation where one was continuously praying to have a pair of shoes and the goddess actually answered that because now the child the son of the priest was wearing shoes and here there are a set of people who do not have shoes who are actually living in conditions where wearing shoes or even having footwear owning the slippers was not possible it, they couldn't afford it imagine shoes here we are talking about shoes for these people even having proper meals three times a day is not actually there it does not really happen so forget about shoes the basic necessities here are missing proper hygiene proper health care education food uh, uh, clothing which is should which has to be proper shelter all these things are lacking so moving across the country the author has seen many children walking barefoot one of the explanations is that it is a tradition and not the lack of money and is wonder if this is just an excuse to explain away a perpetual state of poverty now the author also thinks that maybe somewhere sometimes it is definitely about the tradition and the custom of not wearing the shoes but most of the time she feels that this is just an explanation just a, a way to hide the state of poverty the uh, perpetual means the never ending poverty state of people uh, in the name of tradition now author is pained by the fact that rag pickers are still barefoot so now she is comparing and contrasting the situation of the son of the priest and the rag pickers the author remembers a man from udipi as a young boy who would pass a temple every day where his father was a priest and he would pray for a pair of shoes 30 years later the author visited his town behind the temple there was the house of a new priest and enies noticed that the young boy of the priest now was wearing shoes so his prayer was answered his wish that he was wishing since so many days uh, probably years that please give me a pair of shoes was answered but on the contrary the writer was reminded of the boy who prayed that he should never lose his shoes the goddess had granted his prayer as most of the young boys there now have shoes to wear as against this the rag pickers that is here she was thinking about sahib and his friends and generally also about the rag pickers that in the author's neighborhood they still remain barefoot so she is just thinking about both the you know incidents and both the situations now garbage is gold how do we say garbage is gold so the author's acquaintance with the barefoot rag pickers takes her to simapuri which is a place which was inhabited by uh, sahib and many more boys and families like sahib so simapuri is a place on the periphery that is on the outskirts of delhi which seems to be miles away from it because delhi is very developed and is having a different lifestyle most of the people and here we are talking about a place which is on the outskirts of delhi but does not seem to be a part of it why because here there is uh, no proper development taking place no proper basic houses there are slums all over illegal construction is there people are not living in proper conditions no proper sanitation health hygiene water supply so nothing basic necessities of life is not available there so the place is home to 10000 other shoeless rag pickers like sahib they are all bangladeshi refugees who came here back in 1971 they live in very poor conditions in the mud structures with roofs of tin and tarpaulin the place has no running water facility and no drainage so look at the conditions the basic necessity is not here the rag pickers have lived here for the for the past 30 years and some even more but without identity yet they have a valid ration card not having an identity here does not really is a matter of concern for them does not even bother them why because if at the end of the day they don't sleep with empty stomachs 
so more important for them is the food the necessities of life rather than having an identity card they prefer to live here rather than in the fields at home and home here means bangladesh so they prefer living here than in bangladesh where they had their own fields why because that there in that fields they were continuously being washed or destroyed by the storms and floods and eventually there were no crops that could have been cultivated so no food was available it's despite of the fact that they were having fields so it is better staying here where they are still able to find something or the other from that garbage which for them is gold so which gave them no grain those fields they are talking about which are there in bangladesh they who once lived in the beautiful land of green fields and rivers are now compelled to pitch their tents wherever they find food children are born in them so even if you know the parents or the older generation the adults may have migrated and you know started doing this work but even their children it's very natural for them to adapt to that situation because they are born in that environment they are living with so many people who are just like them so it becomes very natural for them to adapt in that environment so children are born in them and become partners in survival and survival in simapuri means rag picking so this is their occupation over the years rag picking has become an art garbage is gold to these rag pickers it is their only support and means of income sahib tells the author that sometimes he finds a rupee and even a 10 rupee note and when he tells this thing to the author he is very you know having that joy and happiness in his eyes that you know sometimes when i'm looking for things in the garbage i can also find a coin or even a 10 rupee uh, note so here he says that you know when i find a 10 rupee note then obviously i intensify my search i increase my search thinking that this 10 rupee note is like silver to me and when i get this i am hopeful of finding gold which means more money or more useful things in that garbage so annie realizes that garbage holds a different meaning to the parents and to the children for the parents it is a means of survival it is a way for their uh, to have a livelihood whereas for children it is a joy of searching and finding exciting things that they could use so for parents it is the source of their livelihood providing them with food and shelter whereas for children it is wrapped in wonder wrapped in wonder here means that maybe they are surprised to find something or the other looking for the those little little things which comes as a wonder or as a surprise to them then lost spring so one winter morning what happened the author she was just going somewhere and she saw that uh, sahib was dressed in a very faded uh, t-shirt and shorts and was also wearing shoes tennis shoes and he was just watching a uh, people or boys playing tennis um from from uh, from the gate of a club and the author went up to him and she asks him that uh, what is he looking at so and you know she just looks at him so the child automatically says that you know i am really fond of playing this game and but i can't do that but see the dress that i'm wearing probably some rich boy who uh, has given it to me because he does not really want to wear those shoes which has hole so i am wearing it and then he even continues with the conversation goes ahead with it and tells the author that uh, my uh, the gate uh, keeper who is there when no one is in the club no one is there uh, inside then he allows me to go inside and ha- have fun on the swings but obviously i cannot go and play that game yes so one winter morning the author sees sahib outside the fenced gate of the neighborhood club he is watching a game of tennis sahib seems to be fascinated by the game he tells the author that sometimes the guard lets him in and even in lets him have a swing the ride in the swing the author notices that sahib is wearing the tennis shoes and he's wearing that faded shirt and shorts 
but when uh, sahib realized that the author was looking at his attire so he himself comes up with an explanation and he tells him that you know some rich boy has given it to him so the fact that some rich boy discarded the shoes because there was a hole in one of them does not really bother that child for sahib who has walked his whole life barefoot it is like a dream come true despite of the fact that one shoe was having a slight or a small hole it was not a matter of concern for sahib because all the life he was never wearing shoes he was always barefoot so even if he gets a used shoe or a, a damaged shoe he is okay with it it's like a dream come true situation for him so sahib no longer is his own master so one day again after a few days the author meets sahib and he was carrying a, he was carrying a steel canister that is a, a steel container and he stops by and he starts talking to the author and he tells her that you know now i'm working at a milk booth and therefore he even tells him that you know there is that milk booth where i'm working at so the author questions him that do you enjoy working there so the moment she questioned him about this then his face his eyes lost that happiness because why because here the author realized that sahib was as a rag picker he was independent he was not under someone right he was enjoying that work even if it was a garbage it was giving him that regular income it he was probably earning uh, you know uh, he was he was not sorry so for sahib he liked being independent that garbage he was working with he was looking searching for stuff he was carrying that garbage bag seems lighter to him than the steel canister why because as a rag picker he had his own freedom no one was his master right he ha- he was independent whereas when while when he's working at that milk booth then that steel container that he was carrying does not belong to him it belonged to the owner and there was a master above him whom he had to follow he was no longer having that independence that he had when he was just a rag picker right so one morning the author sees sahib on his way to the milk booth he is carrying a steel container he informs the author that now he works at the tea stall and is paid rupees 800 and all his meals but the author feels that sahib is not happy his face has lost the carefree look the steel canister seems heavier than the garbage bag the bag was his but the canister belongs to the owner of the tea stall sahib is no longer his own master so here in the situation of sahib we see that he wants to be independent right he likes that freedom irrespective of the fact that while he was working at the tea stalls under someone he was getting regular meals he was getting a fixed wage probably he was earning more than what he did as a rag picker still his freedom his independence was more important in a way is in a way is more important to him than the uh, this job that he was doing at the tea stall so this was the summary of the first story about sahib yes 